Almost live from National Semiconductor, the analog IC design and manufacturing capital of the world, it's the Bob P. Show. Here's your host, Bob Pease. The Bob Pease Show is here today, and we're going to be talking a lot about active filter stuff. And we're going to be visiting with Martin Cano. Uh, hi, Martin. Hi, Bob. He's a senior Webbench Applications Engineer, and as usual, Paul Groe will be our Applications Engineer helping out Hello. on the lab stuff. And this video is brought to you by the sponsor, the letter F. F is for filters and a whole lot of other words starting with F. And we're going to be talking also about, oh yeah, what's all this signal path stuff. Now we're going to be doing linear seminars in Europe in April and in the USA in May. And if you want to see where we're doing it and how we're doing it, go to www.national.com and find the linear seminar stuff and you'll be seeing things such as meeting signal path design challenges from National Semiconductor. And we're also going to be seeing the Bob P's lab notes from 2005, including what's all this common mode rejection stuff anyhow. So that's a bunch of the things we're going to be talking about when we're on our linear seminar tour. Now, when we start out with seminars, with this seminar on filters, we're going to be talking about the PDL6 painter delay line. This is about 34 years old, no, 40, 43 years old, who cares. This filter is made out of an L and a C and an L and a C and some more and some more and more and more and more and more and more. With an op amp, we had op amps back in 1962. We really did. And another op amp, the inductors are on average of about 1.6 Henrys. And Martin will explain about this thing, which is pretty old. Now I'm going to read this thing and not exactly pronounce it. But Webbench Active Filter from National consolidates all the tools you need to design an active filter in one place. Designers can take advantage of virtually any available transfer function with just a couple of clicks on a website. And I've done it, and it works. And it works for me, and it'll probably work for you. This supports a selection of filter types, including low pass, high pass, pass and band pass, and Chebyshev, Bessel, and Butterworth. You can conduct spice simulations of this filter within the WebEdge tool and compare it with the theoretical transfer. So uh, National, Rec National Semiconductor recommends this because it's good stuff. And we also got a special award from EDN Magazine just a couple weeks ago in the Electronic Design Automotion category, including innovation and innovators for Filter WebBench. Starting with this fellow over here, Martin. And now we're going to go with Martin, who is an expert on filters. Uh, your move, Martin. Well, thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah, this, this whole thing started when I uh, joined Webbench. Uh, I was asked uh, by the wonderful people over there um, if I had my uh, own um, uh, filter package, uh, design package, what would it look like? And I said, great. I wanted to do this, 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 and this. Um, and they said? And they said, let's go make one. So that's what we did. As soon as we got... Uh, we got it up and running, uh, we put it on the web and uh, people uh, received it uh, with uh, great um, welcome. Um, okay, we, we will demonstrate some of the Webbench uh, capabilities um, a little bit later in the show, I guess. Um, but for now, uh, in, in sort of doing this, we put together a couple of test cases, simple test cases, uh, to demonstrate uh, certain aspects uh, of the, um, of the uh, uh, filter design process, really. Uh, the, the, the test case we have is a simple second order Bessel at a 10 kilohertz uh, break point with a gain of two. And we came up with two test circuits uh, to demonstrate specific issues one is called the Fat Boy. Which, That's what I called it. Yeah, which basically is, uh, uh, again, a Bessel filter, um, but uh, the 
capaci capacitor and resistor values are relatively on the lower side. And we have, by comparison, the Thin Man, which uh, is, again, the same filter, but as you can see, the uh, capacitors and resistors have been scaled up. Um, and uh, another one of the filter that we have, which is another topology, is the multiple feedback inverter. Um, so we, we basically are comparing uh, these three topologies uh, in showing the, the difference, the somewhat subtle differences uh, in, in behavior. And all three of them theoretically give the same filter function, and yet we'll show they're not exactly the same. Exactly. Um, so let's get started here. Uh, we're going to show um, one of the results that we took uh, on this. Uh, basically, the Fit Man versus the Fat Boy, which again, these are two different versions of a Salen key. Um, and as you can see, uh, for an LM358, um, Using the, the the thin man, I mean the fat boy, we it stops stops working as a filter somewhere around what is that 20, 20, ki kilohertz. 20 kilohertz and it only dips about 20 dB. Um, we we have a pretty good understanding of why that happens. Uh, it has to do with the topology uh, interacting with the, um, the uh, interacting with the capacitor and resistor values. When we replaced it with the thin man. The region over which the, this acted as a filter extended considerably. Um, as a matter of fact, it went to, let's see, 20, 60 dB, whereas the other one only went to uh, maybe 30 dB at the most, this one over here. So, um, so that demonstrates uh, the importance of, of, of that aspect. Should we mention the difference between the thin man and the fat boy? You want to drag those two guys back? Uh, yeah, set this aside, yeah it, might, right? it, it might be good to, to make this a little bit the, more The clear. fat boy starts out with your basic computer function saying, if you have 475 ohms, if you have 0.015 and 1.47k, et cetera, and a gain of 2, if the output impedance here is wonderful, this will be a perfect filter. But the output impedance of an op amp at a megahertz is not wonderful. Exactly. So we said, what if we didn't have such low impedance, such low impedances? What if we had... 16 times high. Now, the, the basic thing about 15 times higher impedance is 0.015, a lot of people do not have a lot of 0.015 microfarad capacitors run. But if we say, divide that by 15, we'll get 0.001. And you have 0.001s around, mm -hmm. which leads us to the thin man, which has 15 times smaller capacitor, 15 times, 15 times higher impedance, 15 times higher impedance. The impedance here hasn't changed. And that says, oh, if this is jamming a lot of current in here at high frequencies and the output impedance is the same, then we should have an improvement of a large factor. Exactly. Um, so that uh, you can see how dramatic those, uh, this, these differences are, especially with, with this particular uh, uh, op amp, the LM358, which doesn't have a very uh, high bandwidth to begin with. Um, however, uh, the, there, there, there is a dramatic, uh, dramatic uh, uh, increase in the um, um, bandwidth uh, over which it acts as a filter. Oh, by the way, every, every foil we'll be showing you has the same horizontal scale and the same vertical scale, right? Yes. yes. So we're not going to change no scales to show dramatic improvements or dramatic junk. It's the same scale. Exactly. What's good? Now, here is another example that we did with the uh, LM6132 between the, the, uh, those two uh, uh, circuits. And again, you see an improvement of about, well, I'd say half a decade um, approximately. And in terms 